Hey everyone, welcome to a very special foiled episode. So most of you already know that every Wednesday throughout the entire year, or almost the entire year ever since I started this channel, I put out a video that's foil centric as part of the foil series. I either have a foil mail day or I show off a foil deck or I open up a foil centric sealed product. And, you know, it's been a pretty popular series, I find. It's probably one of the more popular series apart from my deck techs. And I always get good interaction and good feedback. So I said, how do I, how do I sign off on the year uh, with my foiled series? And even though this is not technically the last video this year for, fo for this, you know, foiled series on Wednesdays, uh, it is going to be the second to last one. I figured, you know what, let's, let's make it a big one. And what could be bigger than sharing with you Delver's entire foiled collection, essentially. This binder has basically over a thousand foil cards I've collected throughout the years. Every single card is foil. Uh, if it's not obvious through the triple sleeving that you're going to see and the unfortunate glare that I've tried to combat here, it's the best I can do. This binder probably weighs about 20 pounds or at least 15 pounds. So yeah, everything is in here, over a thousand cards. Uh, the current market of value for everything here is around $45,000. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Although it's $45,000 across a thousand cards, so it's not as good as you think. That you know, once you sell everything, you're left with a lot less. And obviously, I didn't spend that much money. Uh, you know, some of the cards have increased in value over time. Some of the cards I traded for, so on and so forth. Some of the cards I opened, luckily, in packs. But yeah, this is a collection I've I've. I've built over the years, and of course, part of this collection also has to do with my promise of, you know, always owning the cards for the decks that I deck tech, at least the serious decks that I deck tech uh, every Monday, the modern decks in particular. So I own all the cards to show you that I'm not just doing it for content, I am serious about those decks, and I truly want you to try out those decks. So let's start, I'm obviously not going to go and take out every single card, because that would take hours. But I'm going to go through all of these, share them all with you, and any particular foil that I want to showcase, I'll, I'll, I'll take it out. But if you, if you want to know what I mean by triple sleeving, so I mean these are already in these sleeved sheets, and then each card has a double sleeve. So yeah, you're, you're looking through three layers of sleeving here. Obviously these cards do not see a lot of air, oxygen, that's, that's key. Uh, in terms of keeping them clean and keeping them curl free or less curl as possible, and of course, increasing their longevity. So, you know, they're in a temperature controlled environment. And yeah, that's, that's basically, it's basically how it works. So as you can see, I, like I originally started off with having these cards. I'm going to show off a card while I'm talking because I really like watery grave. I, I know I, I tried to make them sorted properly but sorting cards physically is a big pain i mean it's very nice the first time you do it but then once once it's sorted you know good luck trying to expand your collection and you know like i have some blank spots here and there for cards that i eventually want to add or i want to finish a whatever whatever i'm trying to finish but you know it's 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 a bit of a pain so it's these are going to start off all nice and like you know they're all all the lands are together and everything but then it's going to become, yeah, it's going to become just kind of random. So it's Polluted Delta is another artwork, is, is artwork again, foiling again, that I really enjoyed from the original Expeditions. Really, really beautiful, beautiful art. I don't know what you think about that. Uh, I think, you know, I'm pretty sure I showed this on a mail day video. Again, during the foiled series release on a Wednesday. And yeah, really, really love Polluted Delta. Creeping Tar Pit. The new one, looking nice. So these are all the Snowlands. So I only have four of most except the Islands because some of the decks that I that I built uh, required more Islands. So I'm gonna zoom out just a tad here. You can see a bit more. Required more Islands, so I just need to buy more again to stick to that rule. So these are the Snow Covers and then you're getting to the Judge Foils. I really, really love the Island Judge Foil. Really, really beautiful. I really like that foiling. I like the foiling for all the Judge Foils, but the Island in particular is very very nice and then you got the forest down here nothing nothing to write home about the swamp is okay the mountains are probably my second favorite of the judge foils after the islands it's just there's more going on 
I don't know, I, I really like those. And obviously you see the spacing here for the planes that I'm missing and a few other cards. So yeah, and then you have one waste, I've only needed one so far. Now all the, all the pathways are showing up, the full art pathways. Really love this collection. Uh, I can't wait for the final four to get release of Kaldheim. So I'm looking forward to that. Really, really enjoying, as you can see, blanks. <laughs> waiting for those to come through. And some Eldrazi Temples, Castle Vantress. Of course, you guys watched my Ho 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 Red Green deck, right? From a couple of weeks ago. So, Carpulson Forest, one of my favorite, top all time favorite land arts. I just really like the scene and the snow. Really, really nice. It's on theme for the holidays. Ghost Quarters, I have to fill those up eventually. Same with Field of Ruin. Uh, yeah, it's, it's getting there. I don't have all the money in the world. So we're moving on to Planeswalkers. Renin 6, an unfortunately expensive foil, of course. Oko Thief of Crowns, luckily crashed after it got banned in multiple formats. Um, really disappointed with this Jace, the foiling on this. It looks, again, it looks better on video, on camera for some reason. It looks perfectly normal. In real life, it's actually pretty dark and unfortunate. Tamiyo, so fun to abuse Tamiyo with Time Warp, oh, of course, Liliana of the Veil. Beautiful Liliana of the Veil in foil. And some other random Planeswalkers have room for a bit more. Now we're getting into the more random, see, I mean, look, I mean, look, so Artifact and Enchantment Hate, and then boom, I have Mogus randomly inserted here. I'm gonna be revisiting uh, I'm going to be revisiting my Time Warp deck, my Team Earth Time Warp deck, uh, in the new year. So stay tuned for that. We got some more foils. These old foils, I was speaking to one of the viewers just quickly in a chat, and they said they're not a fan of foils, except for these old foils, which, you know, where the foiling is only on the borders, essentially, and not on the artwork. What do you think? I think it's cool. I mean, I do like seeing the artwork foiled as well, but I think they have a point. They have a point. I mean, I'm not sure if, if we went back. I mean, it's too late to go back to this, I think. I mean, we have etched foils now for for crying out loud. But uh, I don't know if we, if we went back. I don't think it would be the end of the world. Although, again, there are some foils where, the, where it just looks nice. The artwork looks great, foiled. But unfortunately, there's too many where the foiling just kind of ruins everything. So you see the theme here. There's a lot of my red spells. <laughs> And now we're moving on into the Manamorphoses, and now I'm getting into my cantrips in blue. Of course, I visit these pages quite often because it's blue. And you see, here we go again. So another sleight of hand where the foiling is just on the borders. And actually, it looks great. I mean, the artwork is very nice too, but just some, even if you picture, let's say, modern borders, modern like uh, modern border design, but it was, it's foil and the artwork is not, what do you think? Would it work? I'm not sure. I mean, I mean, obviously it would work. It worked in the past, but would people accept it, or they are they just are we too used to the artwork being foil now? I don't know. Not sure. Some obscure cards here. Ancestral Vision. Always nice to abuse that card. Oh, stubborn denial. I think this binder is moving slowly. This is so heavy. I've I've rigged it so it doesn't budge that much. It was actually not easy to get it up this 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 way. Um, Stubborn Denial, of course. I love Stubborn Denial. Nothing crazy about the foiling of Stubborn Denial, but I just love this card. If I could shove it into a deck where the ferocious ability is is active more often than not, oh, what a fun card to play, in modern in particular, of course. Uh, these cards finally came in. <laughs> when I get to the mail data video, I'll explain why I'm still missing two. It basically took a year to get all four. Uh, yeah, I'll, when I when I when I get there, I'll get there. Com Commandeer or Commandeer has insane foiling. Cold Snap in general, I believe that's Cold Snap. Yeah, had crazy foiling, but their blue foils like this this doesn't do it justice. The blue foiling is crazy intense, and it's but it's but it's nice. It's not intense like it was in Double Masters, where a Double Masters foiling is just like I don't know, it's just blinding all in general, but yeah, I, don't know. I just really like the Cryptic Command. It's just really funny that they had done a, a textless version of this card. I know everyone says that, but I do personally find it funny that they they made a textless version of this card. Can you name all four? I could, but I'm not going to now, because if, 
if I screw up, y'all are going to call me out. But I, I do know all four modes, not not by not in order, but I know them all. Uh, do you? I mean, if you don't, that's not your fault. It's just there's a lot there. Force of Negation. I'm so happy they printed this card in Modern because before Force of Negation, all I had was Disrupting Shoal, and now Force is there. So, yeah, I have everything I need. Delver of Secrets. Listen, I am Delver of Brews. Of course, I'm going to own Foil Delver of Secrets. Hex Drinker, fun card to play with. Noble Hierarch, big disappointment on the foiling on Noble Hierarch. Again, on video, it actually looks pretty good. Not so much in real life. I still like, I like this version. I'm just kind of disappointed with the foiling. Luteral Core, I love Luteral Core. Arbor Elf, believe it or not, not a lot of foil Luteral Cores on the market. And I'm not sure if people just don't want to sell it or whatever, but <laughs> it's actually worth quite a few bucks. Um, Snapcaster Mage, of course, Snapcaster Mage. Gotta love the Snap. I believe I got this on like 20% off. I saw like a deal uh, where it was 20% off, so I got all four. I'm like, what? Thank you. I'll take 20% off. And yeah, then the, then the price bounced back. So, cannot complain. Uh, yeah, I really liked, I really liked this version. I'm not, I wasn't a fan of any of the, um, I mean, Ikoria, they had a lot of alternate arts, and Godzilla was not, I was not a fan of the Godzillas, but this is pretty cool. I think this was pretty cool. It was a nice alternative version. Stormbank Entity, thank you for existing. Hooting Mandrills, oh, my favorite uncommon foil. You could tell I'm, I'm Teamer Delver at heart. Uh, you could tell by the way I react to foils, uh, to certain foils. Tarmogoyf, of course. I know everyone's into the OG but I just couldn't justify the cost of the original foils. If, if I had them, obviously, from early on, I would have obviously had, I would have kept them. I would have, I would have had a play set. But paying over $1,000 for just for one right now for me just doesn't, doesn't make sense. I know it's kind of crazy because I'm showing you $45,000 worth of uh, tin foil, essentially. But uh, still, I mean, I have my limits. I don't have infinite money, believe it or not. I have a budget as well. And I need to make sure that there's food on the table. And there's a roof over my family's head. Plus, I mean, if I don't have a roof, I can be able to keep these cards safe. So that's kind of a problem. Brazen Bar, still very expensive, this version. By the way, it's very funny because I have, I'm almost certain if I show you if I show you two versions, look at this. I'm assuming it's just printing. But if you notice, one version is more bold than the other, just in general. I did check it out and it's not fake, but it's just kind of interesting. It seems like it was a different printing thing. I don't know if that was blurry, so I'll just show you again. The, the, the artwork is essentially the same. And, you know, the hologram is fine, passed all those tests, but just text is bold. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if, uh, I wasn't super active when this set originally came out, so I, I didn't really read up on any of the printing issues. I'm just going to assume there were. But I mean, for example, like my Bone Crusher Giants, all of their text is foil. So I don't know, I guess, I, uh, sorry, all of their text is bold. Stupid. So anyway, we'll see. I'm kind of happy with that. Mistress Bobble, uh, rip Arkham's Astrolabe. I mean, it kind of had to be banned. When it was legal, I was like, man, it's so easy to build decks. Decks are so easy to build now. Uh, by, by decks, I mean like, you know, multicolor decks. They were just a joke, essentially. So I had to get banned. Now we're getting into blue theme again. A bit mix here. I have a random blank spot I'm going to have to fill eventually. I'm going to shift my, my thing here. Santa's Reindeer is right there. Magus of the Moon, of course. Alpine Moon, Veil of Summer, still legal and modern. Time Warp. What do you think about this Time Warp? I know I showed it off already in probably in the mail day and in a foil deck video. What do you think? I don't know. I, I liked it. I still like it. Curiosity. I don't know. Uh, the Teamer Delver guys are going to remember this. This was a thing at some point when, in Teamer Delver and Modern. We used to play one of sometimes two of, but mostly one of these. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a tempo card. We don't really play it anymore, but 
just brings back memories, so I still own it. Uro, Full Arts, yes. I got them before the price went down. Uh, sorry, I got them before it got banned, so I kind of took a hit there. Believe it or not, I do own Eldrazi as much as I hate playing against them. I am a hypocrite because I do enjoy playing with them. Savage Knuckle Blade, I will make you work in a deck. Stay tuned for that in January because I'm going to try and make Savage Knuckle Blade work in modern. Uh, I mean, I have no special secret sauce. You, If you really want to make him work, you put him in a deck and you hope the deck can pull its weight for Savage Knuckle Blade. Huntmaster of the Fells. Uh, top five best creatures. Don't forget, every time I play Huntmaster of the Fells in my videos, and I, I mentioned the average time before I win is about two turns, and I've showed that multiple times. If Huntmaster of the Fells stays on the battlefield, it's about two turns and I win the game. So just Keep that in mind. Uh, anyway, I got some engineer explosives there. You know, I rarely look at this. This is probably the second or third time I've actually skimmed through this. And the second time was actually just before shooting this video. I just want to make sure everything was okay. Um, you know, like I didn't somehow ruin my cards while they were in storage. But no, they were not ruined. I'm trying to get everything in line here sorry this is this is actually a very difficult video to shoot believe it or not so I'm, I'm trying my best for you to get everything in here i'm actually hoping it, sh it turns out well <laughs> because if not i'm gonna be wasting about 20 minutes of my time talking about stuff and then i'm gonna have nothing to show for it and then i'm gonna be very 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 frustrated shark typhoon oh man i had to fight to get these at a decent price I did. And I did. Listen, it didn't break anything in modern. It's not. I mean, it's something that can get reprinted eventually. Uh, not. Don't know why it was super overvalued. It was just one of those gold rush things. Like, it happens all the time. Here's another nice example of foiling that's done and not on the art. Pillage. Very, very nice arena promo. I believe it's the arena promo. Yeah. Oh, 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 forgot about these pages. Remember, remember these? <laughs> yes. I don't play Tron, but I had to own, I had, these were, there was, this, this was the exception. I usually buy cards either for, for two reasons. I buy them because I play with them or I buy them because um, just nostalgic reasons because I used to play with them. And then these came out and I'm like, well, I guess I have to make a third reason to buy the cards and I just said oh, it's just really 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 awesome and these were all awesome I had to own them uh, this is officially my favorite printing of Blood Moon in particular I mean the foil but even the non-foil this is officially my favorite printing of Blood Moon this is now the best version very very happy about this one it looks awesome it really just looks awesome I love it what do you think What's your opinion? I know a lot of people enjoy playing the white borders, just kind of troll your opponents, but I'm not. I'm not of that mind. Oh, we got more. And we got Karn. Remember this super insane, shiny Karn? Maybe behind two layers of, of sleeving won't be that bad. Yeah, it's not, it's still pretty bad. Usually the sleeving dulls it a bit, especially since I'm using KMC uh, Perfect Fit Hards. They're a bit more foggy. But nope, that foiling is blinding. It's just double masters in a, in a nutshell. Alright, we got through that. I got some graveyard hate here to trigger all the dredge people. Let's see what else we got here. I'm not a splinter twin like a devotee, like unbanned splinter twin, but I figured I might as well own the pieces in case it does get unbanned, because if it does, I'm going to be compelled to uh, build a deck around it, unfortunately. It's just how it, I would have to be. Of course, I would I would build a teamer uh, twin deck, not not just a red blue one. I find that boring. Goblin guide, Goblin guide, and his pet right here. Of course, I'm getting very random here. Oh, these were in recent mail day video. I'm pretty sure it's a recent mail day. Oh, maybe I haven't released that video yet. No, no, yes I did because we had discussions on it. But uh, yeah. That's coming out. Leyline Tyrant, nothing ever happened with that, although I still have to try and build a deck around it. Currently trying to work on a deck using these two. 
in the same deck. That might be stupid. I'm still trying that out very early. Early, early stages. Omnath. There is Omnath. Very, very nice. Literally got banned while it was in the mail on its way to me. Uh, it, it was so funny. I, I mean, listen, I don't, I don't take that kind of stuff super seriously. If, if, if the prices drop of, of the cards I purchase, whatever. I mean, I, I buy the cards for many reasons, as you can see. But I know in the back of my mind that especially new wizards, they are just going to go nuts. They're going to go nuts on cards, and I, I can't... This is not an investment vehicle for me, although, you know, in theory, I could flip this tomorrow for, let's say, 75% of its current market value. Maybe if I want to be conservative, 50% of its market value. And whatever. Like, I don't think anyone's going to complain about that money if I'm in a, if I'm in a bind. Whatever. It is what it is. I'm not, I'm not necessarily buying these cards to turn a profit. Although it would be nice if I could keep them long term, if my financial means keep them long term, then I will. Okay, let's, let's see. What's the last card we're finishing on? Cling to dust. All right. All right. Cling to dust. So wait, wait, there's actually laugh. Okay. So these are all empty, obviously, um, you know, waiting for more cards to be added, AKA more money leaving my wallet. But there is a special section to Delver's binder. It's not as fancy, although when you see it, you're probably gonna think I'm an idiot. So <laughs> the last few pages are devoted to mostly foil tokens. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't don't laugh. These are tokens I needed for the decks. I mean, listen, I'm all in. I say, when I deck tech a video, and I and I tell you guys you should try it out. I'm serious. I'm buying the cards. I buy them in foil because I enjoy foils. I don't have to, but I do because I, I love foils. It's part of who I am as a magic player. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, I, I just need the tokens for the deck. So I need to buy the tokens. Here you go. They're all in foil. And these are, <laughs> you're going to laugh at me. Listen, I used to do this when I used to play competitively. I used to go to GPs and all that. This is what I did. I would go to every judge. I'm like, Hey, by the way, in my sideboard, I have all of these cards, which are just flip versions of, you know, the cards I'm playing in my deck. Is it okay? I would put them in a different sleeve on the back side of it. I wonder if I did it. Yeah, you see on the back side of it, I write flip only. Just to show them, like, I'm in no way trying to, you know, cheat and trying to get an extra card into my deck to play, like, a fifth Huntmaster Defels, which would be stupid anyway and so high on curve. But even Delver, for example, I would do that. Uh, yeah, so these are, you know, at the end I keep all this stuff because I find it's not really necessary to wolf tokens for Hunt Master of the Fells, of course. I couldn't find this in foils. <laughs> this is actually, literally, the only non-foil card in this deck, in this uh, binder. And I got, I got these spirit tokens for Lingering Souls. So yeah, this, this is it. This is what you're looking at. You're looking at about 4,500 Canadian pesos, I should mention. So that's not US dollars, there's a difference. Uh, 4,500 Canadian pesos and, oh man, yeah, and that's, that's, did I say 4,500? 45,000. I'm an idiot. Yeah, oh, built it over time. I know a lot of you are going to be like, oh man, you're rich and all that. That's not the case. That's, I mean, listen, I spent my money poorly early on. That That's also a thing. <laughs> you can see where it all went. Um, but I do add, I mean, you guys see my mail days, so that's not a, those, those are no secrets. I do add to my foil collection. I am pretty serious about foils. Um, I, I early on started on collecting foils that are specifically teamer related and modern. As you can tell, you only saw the black cards near the end. That's because now I'm starting to get into black and white, which were the last two colors that I really did. I kind of ignored for most of my, you know, magic playing career or I don't know if career is the right word, magic playing time. And of course, you know, now, especially with my channel and being Delver Brews, I can't just stick to Teamer. I find that's, that's not fair to a large, you know, part of the community that doesn't like playing Teamer colors. They like playing black and white and all that, or mixes like Saltai and Abzan, so on and so forth. So yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm doing. What do you think about this video? I, I'm essentially going to be doing this every year. So I have about 200 cards that have yet to be sorted and added to this binder, like just right now. Like I need to shoot the mail day videos. I haven't gone through them all. 
Uh, I have to shoot the mail day videos. I just like this page. These two pages are very nice. Um, let me move the binder again because you can't even see all the cards. This thing is really, really heavy. I should get this away just, to, just so you guys know how much it, how much it weighs. Um, yeah, so I have about 200 more cards I need to go in here. I have a bunch more expeditions and stuff like that. You guys will see them in my mail day videos in the new year. So that's going to be adding to it. Then all the other cards I'm going to be buying throughout 2021. So I think at the end of next year, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to go through the binder. You're going to see the same cards, but you're all going to see new cards as well. And we'll go through them. And, you know, maybe my opinions will change on some of the, of, of the artwork. And I'm going to take your feedback from this video and definitely going to apply it to the next one. So what do you think? What do you think about this collection of foils? Is it impressive? Is it just meh? I know there's no Power 9 or anything in here. I'm not that kind of collector. I'm not really interested in in buying those type of cards. It would be easy just to kind of trade all this in for like three, four cards, you know, like a Black Lotus and maybe some other power card and like have three cards on showcase. But I find that boring and I, I don't find that fun. Here, there are cards I could go through. They're foiled. They're shiny. Some are better than others. Some are really great examples of foiling. Some are really poor examples of foiling. And, you know, I kind of tried to highlight some of those as I was going through it. So yeah, I don't know. I, I hope this was at least somewhat interesting for you guys. I mean, a lot of you really enjoy my foiled videos, so I figured, hey, what's better? What's better than just showing off all of it? <laughs> so this is all of it. Uh, this is everything I own to date, plus some off camera that you can't see, but you'll you'll see soon enough. Let me know what you think. Happy holidays to all of you. I hope you're enjoying your lockdown holiday, uh, but at the very least, trying to stay healthy and you know respecting social distancing as much as possible and trying to deal with the situation that you're essentially forced into along with everyone else. Um, you know, and yeah, that's it. There's gonna be more videos from me this week. I'm still trying to keep that schedule going. Uh, some changes coming in the new year as well. I've already posted some of that on Twitter, but yeah, stay tuned for those. Um, I don't know, let's see, is there any last comments I could I'd make? I think this is gonna be the last rambling video I'm gonna have for the year. I guess I wanna thank you all for being here and subscribing. I know a lot of you subscribe for the giveaways, but that's okay. I mean, subscribing, commenting, uh, you know, interacting with me, giving me feedback. You have no idea. I mean, I have been, look, go back to the first video I posted on this. Actually, no, don't, don't do that. If you're interested in, in watching embarrassing videos, go back to the first few videos I posted on this channel and then look at the new videos I'm doing now and look at the difference. There's a big, there's a big stark contrast, production quality and all that from my first to my current. And 99% of that is based off of your feedback, your words of encouragement. Uh, you know, it, it's all thanks to you, the viewers, subscribers and not subscribers. Thank you very much. Thank you to the patrons as well. Thank you to all of you for supporting me and being helpful throughout this year. I know it was a tough year. It's why I, even more than usual, enjoy doing all those giveaways, giving away $4,000 worth of rares and mythics that I opened up on channel. I give that all away. People have already started opening them up or receiving them, I mean, post sharing them on Twitter, and I'm sure the rest are gonna get to the other winners eventually. I mean, there's a slowdown in the mail across the world, right? So I really enjoy doing all those giveaways, and giving to people that, you know, probably had it way worse than I did and uh, you know hopefully affecting their lives in some minor way uh, you know it, it really brought some joy to me as well so you know I'm, that's why i'm going to be continuing with the giveaways of course if you're not subscribed you're not following me on twitter do so right now if you want to be eligible i believe based on what i've opened so far there's going to be another uh 400 giveaway so two 200 giveaways in january so stay tuned for that and that's just going to be a theme throughout the entire year of 2021 and beyond. But at least for 2021, let's make sure we get through 2021 first, and then we'll think about 2022 uh, at the end of next year. So yeah, I'm gonna say it again, like a broken record. Thank you. Happy holidays, uh, happy new year in advance, and uh, have a good one. <laughs>